Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, and thank you for the opportunity to speak in this debate. And I just want to acknowledge that um, the uh, speeches that have taken, uh, have taken place from both uh, sides of the floor of this chamber and acknowledge uh, people's uh, contributions. Um, but in particular, I want to acknowledge um, uh, my honourable friend from Lewisham Deptford and just the work that she's done around the um, Serious Violence Commission. And I remember many years ago when she first launched this and uh, I was the cabinet member for community safety in Lewisham and, uh, and it was a, a, a well turned out launch at uh, South Bank University if my uh, memory serves me correctly. She's given me a nod so I think I'm correct. <laughs> I also just wish to um, acknowledge um, my honourable friend um, from uh, Gedding as well. And uh, one of the things that, that he said that, um, that really uh, struck in, uh, in my mind was when he said that, you know, some young people are more afraid of gangsters than they are of, um, of, the, of the police. And for me, that gives a sense of the gravity exactly. of the, the pressure, the manipulation, the oppression, the... The, of the, the young people are under, and we mustn't fall short of acknowledging that you know young people don't start out in life saying exactly. I want to get exactly. involved in crime, I don't want to I want to carry a knife, you know. They 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 start out by saying I want to be a police officer, I want to be a fireman, you know. They have dreams, and we need to help young people to succeed in their dreams and in their visions, and to make a way for them as much as as possible. When I consider serious violence, I, I often think about uh, knife crime. I think about young people, their vulnerability, the risk of harm to them and to others. But indeed, um, this isn't the only type of serious youth violence, sorry, of, of serious violence. It's not just about young people. And neither is knife crime just associated with young people. The situation we're seeing in London is a lower volume of these crimes, but a higher harm rate which is causing significant harm of fatalities to, to young people. And figures from the Metropolitan Police show that there were 14,700 recorded crimes involving knife and sharp instruments, the highest number over the last 10 years. Sadly, the proportion of black, Asian and minority ethnic young people either being a victim or alleged perpetrator of knife crime or even those involved in joint enterprise, part of joint enterprise, enterprise has also increased and this is a great concern. Young people and knife crime are the focus of uh, the speech that I'm making uh, this evening. Um, Robert Reiner, a retired lecturer at uh, the London School of Economics, when referring to young black people's exper experience of the police states that they experience over-policing and under-protection. And I feel a genuine concern um, of what the, the, home, the information that the Home Secretary has uh, brought to us in terms of increasing the stop and search powers around Section 60. And I say this because we have the Scarman inquiry, the McPherson inquiry, that talks about the tensions that can be created within communities and how that can go on to affect our society. And uh, we need to think very seriously about how we reach young people to help young people to have trust in the police to therefore to be able to come to them when they need their help. And I do not think it is the right way to start from the offensive when you're uh, in terms of stopping and searching young people. But it's actually for me, and I know there are uh, many like-minded people and organisations of the view that is about building trust and relationships with young people and getting to know young people. And it's only through doing that that young people and their communities can start to think and feel that they can go to the police when they experience harm or terror. And we need to encourage that as much as possible. I remember as a as a, a young child knowing my uh, local Bobby and I say that in a, an endearing term you know the local Bobby that used to come to our house and used to come in for a cup of tea we all knew him it was a, it was somebody that we trusted in our local community and we had a very good experience of that and for that reason we do need more community police officers some attitudes and behavior of the police towards black young people does need to change and this is not a new phenomenon. All young people need to know they can expect help, support and protection from the police. 
Instead of carrying a knife for protection, they should be able to, to confidently seek out the police protection, as I've already mentioned. But this is sometimes very far from the truth for many young people. I know there is some progress within many police forces around and across the country, but the borough commanders move around so quickly from one area to another, and they hardly sometimes have time to implement what they have begun. Serious violence is a complex problem, and it's not just about police and alone, as there are many other contributing factors. With this said, we've already heard here in this chamber that young people need to feel like they have a voice, that their views are heard, that they're valid. But we must also remember that they are young, even though they can sometimes look yeah. much older. I welcome the government's serious violence strategy published by the Home Office in April <coughs> last year, where it attempts to look at the root cause of the problem and its intention to support young people to leave productive lives away from violence. But much more needs to be done to support young people and their families where they experience deprivation and disadvantage in our society. And much more needs to be done for looked after children and care leavers who rank highly in our prisons. And that is why the public health approach needs to be seriously considered for our young people. The strategy has been praised for its focus on early intervention and prevention. And a holistic approach to truly combat this problem, which involves families, is, families issues, identity, a sense of belonging, and looking at young people's well-being and mental health. It is also about structural changes to multiple systems and agencies, including policing of young people, health services, youth services, housing, education, and the criminal justice system. And I applaud Lewisham Council for developing its own public health approach against the backdrop of limited funds. And the government, in reviewing the public health approach, might like to take some advice from uh, our local authority for already developing a strategy around this. The public health approach needs to be taken more seriously, as well as investing in our youth service provisions and investing in our third sector. And this brings me on to youth provision. Spending on youth services has fallen by 70% under this government. This has affected the Grove Park Youth Club in my constituency. This closed in 2013 as the central government cuts meant the council could no longer afford to maintain it. The youth club's catchment area encompasses around 7,000 young people. It is situated in one of Lewisham's uh, most deprived wards. In the local estate, there were two incidents of serious youth stabbings recorded in the period since the youth club was closed. Government statistics show that crime in the club's catchment area rose in the period of 2010 to 2015, despite a reduction in crime overall in the borough. I'm supportive of bringing this club back into use, a very much needed club, and this should be given consideration as part of the government-led public health approach. In the meantime, I would also like to pay tribute to the model of a mobile community youth service uh, called XLP used in my constituency, as well as Ubuntu, a third sector organisation that supports parents and young people from black, Asian and minority ethnic backgrounds. They are both doing well at making the kinds of sustained interventions in young people's lives that make a real difference and again against the backdrop of minimal resources uh, we, as we already heard as well from uh, my honourable friend from Gedding these third sector organisations should not be skimping around for right, money exactly. but the funding should be there because they are making a real yeah. and significant difference in reducing serious <coughs> youth crime and empowering young people and their families. The government could also learn something, as I've said, from these two fantastic organisations to invest further in the third sector, to increase spending in local government for young people's provisions and to launch their public health approach to serious youth violence. Yeah. 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 Yeah.